Hello and welcome to the first Willy Badger podcast of 2023, which is apparently brought to you today by too much makeup and um, buckets of tea. Uh, oh, the bugs this winter, they're not fun, are they? They're not fun. Um, still, I was going to do a roundup of everything that I had made in 2022 because that seems to be one of the done, you know, podcast things. But I ran into two problems. Firstly, I could not remember everything I had made in 2022, which, you know, slight hindrance. And secondly, uh, just from what I could recall, um, I realised that if I did that video, it would be about a year and a half long. So we would be into 2024 by the time I'd finished it. Um, because knitting is my job. Like it is what I do for a living. And so I do a lot of it. And um, I have been knitting for well over a decade now. So even though I have a stupid, ugly English style throwing action, I'm quite speedy. So I abandoned that everything I made last year plan and instead we are going with everything I finished off at the end of 2022 um, with a bit of an extended disco mix about uh, full bust adjustments as well uh, because I have basically decided that 2023 is the year of the bust adjustment. Um, I started doing it last year. I did not shout about it enough. I am going to shout about it now. Uh, so... Uh, kicking off both the uh, Everything I Finished chat and the Bust Adjustment chat, hopefully, is this here. This is, uh, if you've watched my podcast before, you will have seen this knocking about. It is my big Jimmy Jab jumper. This is actually the fourth sample I have knitted. Um, it is knitted in, the main thing is Camgarn, which is uh, Lopi's sport weight held together with uh, tin silk mohair by Sadness Garn. Um, and the contrast is In the Mood Surprise from Kremka, which is a fantastic colour changing yarn. So all of this, all one yarn, I did not change at all. Um, this I cast on like spring last year. It's just been sort of sitting, just needing one sleeve. And I finally went, do you know what? I think I'll, I think I'll do that sleeve now. Um, anyway, what I normally talk about when I talk about the big Jimmy Jab is I talk about, oh, it's a lot easier than it looks and blah, blah. This is a slip stitches. You don't need to do a proper colour work. It's not what I'm talking about today. What I am talking about today is the bust adjustment because this here is a circular yoked sweater and, um, Circular yokes and big boobs generally are not friends. Uh, circular yokes kind of work on the basis that like, you know, they're symmetrical the whole way around. You might have a few short rows at the back to raise the back neck. Um, but in terms of like up to here, that's probably traditionally the best you're gonna get. Now, I don't know about you, but I am not symmetrical front and back. Um, I'm gonna talk a bit about the upper bust measurement, which is something that, you know, exists a lot in the sewing world, um, which is you take it directly underneath your armpits across here, and it gives you a better sort of idea of your overall frame size. Um, because I think traditionally, a lot of sweater designs, you choose your size based on your full chest circumference. Um, as I discovered when I was making a jumper for my dad last year, my father, a six foot two man, has a smaller full chest than me, a five foot four woman. Um, the difference, the boobs. So I have an upper bust of 39 inches and a full bust, depending on like time of the month, bra, all of that stuff, of sort of 46, 47 inches. Um, yeah, that's quite a big difference. <laughs> so, uh, that sort of 46 inch chest measurement looks very different on me with my 39 inch upper bust to a six foot two cis male who would presumably have an upper chest measurement of about 46 inches. Um, so yeah, that makes fit problem. 
So one thing that is becoming more popular in a lot of patterns at the minute, which is really good to see, is a horizontal bust adjustment, by which I mean a short row bust start shaping underneath the bust. So this is an example here. This is a pattern from uh, Summer 2021 Pom Pom, which I have forgotten the name of, but we'll put in the description. It is a little cropped summer top. It did not originally have horizontal bust starts in, but I added one. And this shows you why. This is the back. So you can see that the back hem is a good probably two inches higher than the front. And that makes up for at the front, it gets pulled up by going over the boobs. Um, it's a bit like when you look at like a tailored shirt or a tailored dress and there's the bust start at the side there that's sort of pulling that side material up whilst leaving extra space there. Um, I'm not going to go into huge detail about how to work horizontal bust starts. I will put a link in the description about how to do them. Um, but yes, they are a thing. But what they do not address is the width issue. Because if you look at a tailored shirt or a tailored dress or something, there is also darts here under the boobs, bringing in fabric there, because having the boobs doesn't just mean you have to go further on the front. There's also more at the front to cover horizontally. That is the issue that I have always had with circular, do circular yokes. I will learn to speak. Um, that there is not enough space horizontally or Alternatively, if I knit it to my uh, full chest measurement, where I've got half of the stitches in the front and half in the back, there will be way too much in the back. All this space flapping about here, not enough in the front. No amount of horizontal bust start shaping is going to fix that. All it will do is it will lengthen the front of your jumper, which, you know, is something that needs to be done. Uh, but if you have ridiculous bangers like me, you might need a little bit more. So that is where ye olde Big Jimmy Jab came in. Um, what I have done with the Big Jimmy Jab, and what is particularly about this one, is I have added in a full bust adjustment, which creates, it increases the stitch count basically, around here. Um, after all of the yoke increases has worked, there are two further increase rows, which are worked just on the front, so, you know, between here and here, to add that extra space. And then if I stand up, down there, down the side, it's decreasing them back out again. So, what it means is I have a sweater that fits over my boobs, but also, if I turn around, it's not bagging and sagging at the back and all of that. And it's not swamping me on the waist, it's not doing any of that. Now this jumper, this sample in particular, I started knitting uh, to basically test how far I could push the bust adjustment. Turns out you can push it quite far. This is a size three. I will put up in a moment the uh, sizing chart. That's the word I need for the big Jimmy jab. If I were to knit based on my full chest, I should be knitting about a size five. Um, I have knitted a size five of this. I will put up a photo of what the size five looks like. Um, I have also knitted a size four, which is the size I should be knitting based on, you know, my upper bust and the recommended ease for the pattern and all of that, because originally the pattern's designed to have about four to six inches of positive ease. Um, I'll put up a little picture of how that looks as well. But I decided I wanted to have a slightly sort of closer fitting big Jimmy Jab. So I went for the size three with the bust adjustment, which has approximately, well, roughly neutral ease over the boobs um, to see how it went. It went well. I'm really pleased with it. I'm really chuffed. Um, so yeah, full bust adjustments. 
So the reason I'm talking about full bust adjustments specifically today is because you can hack patterns to put them in. And I have done that with some of the things that I have finished off at the end of the year. Um, I don't do full bust adjustments and everything by any means. It depends a bit on, well, various factors. You know, if it's oversized, so six plus inches of positive ease, I'm not going to bother. Um, if it's cabled all over, if it's got massive colour work, you know, can I be bothered? Possibly not. Um, I am putting them into all of my designs that have less than that sort of four to six, well, less than that six inches of positive ease. Um, because, you know, boobs. But uh, they're always optional in my patterns, so you don't have to put them in. Um, but I wanted to show how you can put them into other things as well. So this is a Semper sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl, which is an absolute blooming delight of a pattern. Um, I used one of the recommended yarns for it. This is Knitting for Olive Merino in Robin, held with uh, soft silk mohair in Claret, I think. Um, anyway, I've just realised it's a good match for my lipstick mm. um but lovely pattern got lots of lovely little details in it like you know you can see this end here the start of the neck is the start of the round is here which means you can work short row shaping uh for the back neck without getting all baffled and confused with the increases and things like that um it is a very sort of classic raglan sweater sort of DK-ish weight once you've held yarns together. Um, and yes, I put a bust adjustment into this. So um, I can't remember off the top of my head what size I made. I want to say a G, I might have made that up. Um, but I basically made the size smaller than the size I should make based on my full bust. And then what I did was I put in two rows of increases somewhere around here. The mohair fuzz has hidden them very nicely on this. Um, so you can't really see them at all, um, which has created that extra space in the front. And then I've decreased them back out again down there. Um, it has made this jumper fit. It's so good. Um, it looks like I haven't worn it because it's got the ends hanging off. I obviously have worn it. I've just tucked the ends in. Um, it's like, it's a proper like staple jumper, this one. And I uh, am fully intending to knit one, maybe two more. I'll probably end up with about six in my wardrobe now. We might have a friend about to join, you know? I have a new cat. He uh, hasn't yet decided if he's gonna be a podcast cat. So I've sort of subtitled this episode of the podcast, Escape from Sleeve Island because much like my big gym, uh, when the start of December rolled around, I had one sleeve left to knit on this. And I decided that I really, 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 really wanted to wear it for Christmas. Um, I decided this on about the 18th of December. So I had to panic knit and then a panic block, but I did it. I wore it with a lovely sequin skirt. Um, my mother-in-law approved of this sweater so much that she has requested one of her own. Oh, my cat's just spotted next door's cat. Oh, they've seen each other through the window. Sorry, I had to pause recording because of the high drama. The high cat drama. We used to have old lady cats. Uh, they were delightful, super chilled. Um, 16, one of them was when she died, the other one made it 17. Our new cat is a boy cat, he is one year old. He is a different beast. Um, he just fell off the windowsill because he tried to pounce at the window to attack next door's cat. And uh, the window, surprisingly, was solid. Anyway, um, that sounds like a description of a video for a different type of YouTube channel. But there we go. Um, back to knitting, shall we? Um, my advent knit this year was with a uh, skein and the stitches yarn advent, which was beautiful. Uh, it was entitled A Very Georgian Christmas. I absolutely love the Georgians. I have said before on this podcast, I think the Georgians are by far the most interesting, um, like royal family period. Less beheading than Tudors, but still really like, I mean, if you think Prince Harry and his lot are bad, mate, mate, 
read about the Georgians. Whoa. Anyway, that's irrelevant. Um, and what is relevant is my advent jumper, which is this. Um, it's a little bit crumpled. Uh, it started off as a Stripes by Andrea Mowry. Um, as you can see, it has stripes. I mean, just look at that fade. Look at it. It's so nice. Um, as you can see, this is another circular yoke. And I decided that, yes, I was going to put a bust adjustment in this. Um, I decided quite late in the day, so it's maybe a little bit lower than the standard. Um, oh, it's in here. There we go. I put an increased row in there. Um, again, just in the front and then decreased it out under there. Um, again, fits beautifully. Um, what you could do, and I haven't done it on this, and I didn't do it on the semper because I couldn't be bothered, is you could like stack this up with a horizontal bust adjustment. Um, so if you're working top down, you could do increase rows, separate sleeves, horizontal bust starts, then decrease the extra stitches out. Um, that would get you like top notch fit. Um, I couldn't be bothered. What I did instead was I did a dipped hem at the back. So I, in fact, did the opposite of adding length to the front um, because I wear very high-waisted jeans. I almost always have a sort of like French tuck situation going in, going in, going on, which sounds dirty, but isn't. Um, and also I really wanted to finish this before the new year and um, doing a dipped hem meant I wasn't doing full rounds, so I got it finished. I'm just gonna show you the cap. Hmm, suspicious. Hmm. Anyway, moving on from bust adjustments. And I would love to say that I didn't put bust adjustments in any of these last three projects because I'd really, you know, carefully considered and decided blah, blah, blah. I didn't think about it. I just knitted them. I mean, in reality, they are a bit, they've got a bit more ease. Two of them patterned, I just, whatever. Um, I'm slightly haphazard on things, maybe something to realise that. Um, the first of these uh, that I'm going to show you though was a, uh, a project that I had straight up forgotten about. Um, it was another sweater school sweater. So I tend to knit a sweater along with my sweater school class when I do that at No Frills. And this I think was from like the first sweater school. It is an Aosta, again, by the Knit Pearl Girl. Um, it's knitted in Cos by Sadness Garn, and the bottom here is Sniffnug by Camera Rose. Um, I f the cat is trying to eat a, eat a paper snowflake. Anyway, um, I found it at the bottom of my chest of projects, and I went, oh, I should finish that, because can you guess what it needed? One sleeve. So I sat down and in about I think a night finished that one sleeve. Um it's so comfy, it's so warm. Wearing it is don't listen, is a bit like wearing a cat. I really do like how it turned out. Um so much so that I made another one. <laughs> so this is uh my Aosta sweater number two, which you may be looking at and being like, uh, mate, that, that is a cardigan. You would be correct in that assessment. It is indeed a cardigan. I'm going to put it on. Um, but what I did, and this is an idea straight up stolen from Meg from No Feels Knitting, I steaked it. So I knitted the sweater pattern and then I steaked it because um, I quite like a high neck cardi and I just wanted something warm and cosy and lovely. Um, so this one I knitted in Alifos Lopi. Oh, it is so good. It is so warm. It is so snuggly. I'm going to take it off before I overheat. So you can see here, if I show you here, that is my stick uh, that I just put down the middle and button band. Um, I am going to just sort of do a line of crochet well, probably two lines of crochet around the neckline uh, because it's a fairly heavy jumper, this one. Um, the other one is very lightweight, blown yarn. This is the thick Icelandic wool, Alifos Lopi. 
could probably wear this basically as a coat. Um, I tipped over just into the eighth ball for it. So it's 700 grams of cardigan um, all hanging off this neckline. So yeah, that's going to need a bit of a reinforce. But generally very happy with how this has turned out. Very happy indeed. Uh, very glad I stole that idea from Meg. Yeah. What's the cat? Just peered somewhere into the house. Um, anyway, final of my year-end knits is one that you've definitely wanged on about before on here. It is my novice cardigan. Oh my god, look at this. Look at this. Uh, in uh, this was Truly Hooked Sweater Club. I think this was Sweater Club number eight this year. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. There's the button band hiding there. Um, I knitted this as the pattern suggests. Uh, I knitted this mainly because uh, the Novice Cardigan is one of the patterns that gets used a lot at sweater school. It is, you know, it's the Novice Cardigan. It is designed to be knitted by people who have not necessarily knitted things like garments before. Um, and it is a really good straightforward pattern. Um, I love the yarn because it means it's a sort of neutral cardi, but not fully neutral. It's got the speckles. Um, this would have been relatively simple to put a bust adjustment into, but I didn't bother largely because I never actually button up my cardigans, ever. Like I don't even bother sewing buttons on most of them because I know I won't wear them buttoned up. Technically, I suppose that means they remain unfinished, but I have sewn my ends in and I almost never sew my ends in. I mean, that should have been the sign that I was coming down with the flu, really, that I had decided to sew in ends. But um, anyway, yes, this is a good, straightforward pattern. You, yeah, you're using a circular needle, but knitting flat for the body of it. Um, and then the sleeves are done on a 40 centimetre circular. So the only bit where you need to faff with like double points or magic loop, do magic loop, do magic loop, double points are awful. Um, cuffs here. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to show you. Um, I expect there may be some questions on bust adjustments. If you have them, put them in the comments. I will endeavour to give you the best response possible. Um, I do also do an online workshop all about bust adjustments. So it talks about that sort of full bust adjustment thing that I've been talking about and how to work it on different sweater styles and how to do the maths and all of that. I do also go into horizontal bust starts and waist shaping and things like that there. As you can tell, I have put a lot of thought into this. I have put a lot of thought into this. I have spent a lot, a lot of my life angry about things not fitting me properly. Yes, I think that is it for now. I'm going to go find the cat. Check he is not too traumatised by his uh, quite literal run in with the window. And um, I shall hopefully see you all soon. Bye.